Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurophysician from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. I am also the medical author of two books, Focused Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, the contrast CT head. The contrast CT head neuroimaging concepts part 4. Contrast CT head. To understand about contrast CT head, we need to understand what actually the blood brain barrier is. Normally, normally when a contrast is given, it does not appear in the brain because of intact blood brain barrier. This is a protective mechanism. There are so many toxins in the blood. If everything were to enter into the brain, it can cause toxic encephalopathy. So nature has given a good protection to the brain in the form of blood brain barrier wherein substances present in the blood cannot enter into the brain easily because of this tight blood brain barrier. So what is this blood brain barrier? This is a normal blood brain barrier. So here you can see this astrocyte foot process. So this is the capillary endothelial cells and this is the blood. So here you can see the capillary endothelial cells. There is a tight junction. So anything which is present in the blood cannot enter into the brain easily because of these tight junctions. So this is known as the blood brain barrier. It is a protective mechanism. So here on one side you see the brain with the astrocyte foot process. The inside of it is the blood vessel with the endothelial cells and the tight junctions between the endothelial cells. So anything present in the blood cannot enter into the brain easily because of these tight junctions and this barrier is known as the blood brain barrier. But blood brain barrier is deficient in two important regions of functional significance. What are they? One, when we need to secrete hormones and allow it in to enter the brain, the blood brain barrier should be deficient. Otherwise, the hormones secreted by the brain cannot enter into the blood. For example, pituitary gland. So pituitary gland secretes hormones. It has to enter into the blood and therefore in those regions the blood brain barrier is lacking so that the hormones secreted by the brain can enter into the blood and can be carried to the various organs for various functionals various functions so one regions where the brain has to secrete hormones and to enter into the blood the brain blood brain barrier is lacking the second area of functional significance is the area postrema in the area of postremia, it is the area which senses toxic substances so that it results in vomiting. So in those areas also the blood brain barrier is lacking. So that any toxic substances, example for cancer we give various chemo uh, and antineoplastic drugs, chemotherapy. So these drugs are can cause side effects or any toxic elements can cause side effects and therefore they can be sensed if there is a lack of blood brain barrier by the area postrema and can initiate vomiting by triggering the chemoreceptor trigger zone. So areas wherein the hormones has to be secreted into the blood, areas where the brain has to analyze the toxic elements of the blood and therefore result in vomiting, the blood brain barrier is lacking. These regions are specially found around the ventricles so we call that as circumventricular organs other than these regions the blood brain barrier is intact because of this tight junction so this is very very important so anything in the blood cannot en enter into the brain easily because of this tight junction known as blood brain barrier but in conditions like inflammation tuberculoma 
neurocysticercosis or metastasis tumors what happens this blood brain barrier is broken down so anything which is present in the blood enters into the brain easily so we take this as an advantage in neuroimaging and radiology so in conditions like neurocysticercosis tuberculoma or metastasis when give when we give a contrast agent it generally does not appear in the brain but in conditions like metastasis tumor neurocysticercosis or tuberculoma the blood brain barrier is broken down so when we give a contrast and when it is present in the blood since there is a blood brain barrier since the blood brain barrier is broken down it enters into the brain and therefore the brain appears as a contrast enhanced lesion so lesions which we are not which are not well seen in persons with ct head without contrast when we when we give contrast and if it enters into the brain and appears as enhanced then we think that there is a breakage of blood brain barrier and therefore tumors neurocysticercosis or tuberculoma can be well seen after giving ct head after giving a contrast and well appears on the a ct head which is known as contrast enhanced ct head so this is the basic principle behind the contrast ct head and blood brain barrier so sometimes lesion on ct head are not well seen on enhanced ct head due to intact blood brain barrier which is a protective barrier but in pathological conditions like tumor and inflammation the blood brain barrier gets broken therefore when a contrast iodinated agent is given to patients with tumor the contrast enters into the brain and appears enhanced and well visualized because of the breakdown of the blood brain barrier so here you can see in metastasis before contrast there is a suspicion that there could be a lesion but we are not sure but after giving contrast this lesion appears well enhanced it is because of metastasis there is a breakdown of the blood brain barrier and therefore when we give contrast into the blood it appears in the brain because of the breakdown of the blood brain barrier and therefore it appears as contrast enhancing lesion so very important principle for contrast enhancement is the breakdown of the blood brain barrier so this is the a brain of a metastatic lesion before contrast and this is the lesion which appears well enhanced after giving contrast so the risk of contrast infusion include allergic reactions and nephropathy which is most often transient and reversible but can be more severe in patients with underlying renal dysfunction so these are the wonderful concepts of ct contrast enhancement the other important concepts of neurology especially the clinical neurology i have put in a book called exam oriented clinical neurology if interested this book could be bought the other book i written is focused neurology written by me dr s srinivas entire neurology i put it in a question answer format so this book will be very useful for viva oral exams this book is available from all leading booksellers online including amazon so if interested this book could be purchased online if you have liked and enjoyed these wonderful concepts of ct contrast please share the link like but please subscribe to my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts which is india's leading neurology educational youtube channel please subscribe to dr srinivas medical concepts and my page dr srinivas concepts thank you bye